Good evening, everyone. I hope that you've had a pleasant Thanksgiving, and I hope that you are in good spirits as it's snowing right now on this lovely little Wednesday evening. Um, crazy to see that we're just now starting to get in wintertime. We've already had a, a decent little amount of snowfall happening. But uh, so this evening, I wanted to come here to this really, I guess I'd say, peaceful room that I hardly ever really come in. Uh, even when we're at church, I'll walk past them. Oh, man, I need to go in there for a bit, but... I know I, I, I usually give you pretty strange scenery, but tonight I wanted to come here just for some odd reason. It just came to me and said, hey, let's, let's, let's go in this the prayer room. Because uh, I think a lot of times in life we can get kind of going one way or the other. And, and sometimes the Lord comes in a way to, to help us guide or provide us guidance to get us in, back into proper alignment. So that's exactly why I got that goofy paddle sitting right over there against the uh, the altar there. Um you know, a, a paddle is a is a strange thing. Uh, most of you know that I enjoyed kayak, and I keep bringing that up on every it seems like every Wednesday that I just you know talk about things. But to me, it was a really uh, enjoyable thing that I used to do, and I spent a lot of time doing it. And, and a lot of big, meaningful events happened while I was uh, paddling. And so that 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 paddle right there it never really saved my life or anything, but it did steer my boat down certain places that honestly the boat didn't want to go. Uh, I can remember several times uh, it was a canoe and I would be going along down a rapid set and I'm like, oh man, I need, I need to go to the left. And the boat did not want to go to the left. I mean, it, it wanted everything under the sun to go to the right. And sometimes it took me jamming that down into the rock face or a, a, a crevice and really pushing with a lot of force to get that boat to go the right direction. And, uh, you know, it, it wasn't my fault. It wasn't anything fault. It was just the, the current and the way the boat was going. It, it took a quite a lot of force on that paddle, and that paddle uh, did its job. It's wrapped in carbon fiber. It's a good little paddle. I love it. It's one of my prized possessions. But, uh, you know, that's one of the things that I, last time that we sat and talked when the cows invaded our space, we were talking about Jonah and how that even in the time of when he was, you know, drowning, basically, he still prayed a prayer of thanksgiving to the Lord when he was in the belly of the fish. And that's what we've been talking about in Sunday school is that, you know, this was a really strange situation, really, really odd place to be for Jonah. And it's really amazing for him to be praising the Lord when he's in the stomach of a fish. And that's really what I want to spend a little time on tonight is something that, you know, a lot of times we tend to go by and don't pay much attention to is the corrective measures that God gives us, the, the paddles or the oars that God force in our lives sometimes that will correct our behavior or correct our way of our, our what direction that our life is going. And sometimes we need to be cognizant of what, what is going on in those situations and try to relax and say, all right, I understand this is a corrective measure and where's God wanting to go. So before we really get started, I promise I'll, I'll try not to keep you over my 10 minute maximum like I always try to say I set, but I usually go over that. But let's pray right quick, then we'll get started. Father God, thank you for giving us the ability to discuss your word in a, in, in a means right now that is very unique. We can't come together like we used to. We can't see each other like we used to. But yet, through technology, through, through honestly your grace, you've given us the ability to discuss events that has occurred in your r recorded word. Lord, help me to be understandable and meaningful as the the thoughts and, and ideas that came to my mind come out of my mouth and go through these radio waves to the people that are listening and watching. Lord, thank you for your son, Jesus, because he's he is all of it. And it's his name I pray. Amen. All right. So like I said, you know, paddles are kind of odd. Uh, they have a specific purpose, and that's to steer that boat. So without further, you know, blabbering about the paddles, you know, what, what biblical evidence do we have that God actually uses these types of events and whatnot to steer our lives or, or us into the direction of his will? So I'm going to turn to Jonah right quick. So if you want to turn to First Jonah, we're going to do something I don't necessarily like to do. We're going to pick and pull from different little spots in, in Jonah. But hopefully, by the end of it, you can see how God, at least it, to me it made sense, that God uses really strange events as a corrective measure, I'm going to keep trying to use that word throughout this, corrective measure, to get Jonah to get in line and do what God needed him to do. 
And so we'll start right quick with uh, chapter 1, verse 4. Now this is after Jonah fled to Tarshish and jumped on the boat. So start with chapter 1, verse 4. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried out to his God. So notice right there in that, that sentence right there, but the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea. God allowed that storm to happen. God made that storm happen. God made that storm happen for one reason, and that's because Jonah was on that boat going in the wrong direction. God made a terrible, scary, uh, violent thing happen where it put sailors, and honestly, it put Jonah at risk. But the reason that God did that was to hopefully get Jonah's attention. Now, God, being sovereign as he is, knew that Jonah was going to be a little bit more stubborn than that. But notice how God provided a corrective measure. And whether or not it fixed Jonah exactly, whether this was the corrective measure or not, I'm going to go over a little further and say that the, the, the fish was the corrective measure, but that can be up for debate, I guess. But one of the things that I did pick up out of this, and, and we talked about it with the kids, and it was, it was crazy that this happened. If you'll flip on down to verse 16, after Jonah has fell overboard, or they threw him overboard, uh, verse 16 says, Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and they offered sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. So, Jonah's, you know, in the water, drowning, basically. But yet, God's plan was to get these men, how many ever men it was on the boat, to follow him. And it worked. And so, do you think Jonah knew that? Of course he did. Jonah just thinks, oh, it's me, guys, so throw me over the side. And that's the amazing thing about it to me in this first corrective measure is that through the power of this storm, not only did Jonah get corrected somewhat, he also was a God was also able to use that as a, I guess you would say, an evangelical moment where he was able to save or convert men that were praying to various gods and to get them to follow him uh, wholeheartedly. And so I think that's one of those things that, although Jonah didn't see the instant corrective uh, measure, God used the storm to be a corrective measure for those men on the boat. Now, corrective measure number two, the one that I believe gets Jonah to really, I don't know, break down and, and realize that God, it, you're going to go to Nineveh. It was almost one of those things like, okay, God, I got you. I got to go to Nineveh. So let's look at, right quick, we're going to look at Jonah's prayer again. And we're actually going to look at verse 17 right quick, then we'll look at Jonah's prayer. So if you look at verse 17, it says, And the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. So it's crazy to me, once again, if you look at verse 4 and verse 17, But the Lord hurled a great wind, and the Lord appointed a great fish. The Lord caused these scary, violent things to happen. I love how, you know, in Sunday school, when you're really studying about Jonah, and you're looking at, you know, some pictures that are in some kid books and whatnot, and it has this nice, pretty little fish. He comes up and swallows Jonah, and we got a Pinocchio situation where he's camped out in the belly of the fish. I mean, if you look from a biological standpoint, like I have to, because that's the way my brain is wired, he was in the stomach of a fish. He was in a nasty, rotten fish smelling, acidic, slimy, dark, terrible, terrible place. And the Lord appointed that to happen to Jonah. He wanted that to happen. And so it's one of those things that is, I don't know, to me is very interesting. Once again, we got a corrective measure. And I think this is the corrective measure that really allows Jonah to break down and, and realize that God is sovereign and that he deserves praise and he needs to do God's will. So where, where, how do we, you know, prove that? Well, if you look at it over here on verse 9 of chapter 2, <laughs> I try to sneak in here, but there's some kiddos outside. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. This prayer that Jonah prays, I know we covered it the last time we talked, pretty in depth, came from the belly of the fish, came from the slimy, acidic, stinky, I think I'm going to die, terrible, terrible place. And then what does God do? Look at verse 10, chapter 2, verse 10. And the Lord spoke to the fish and vomited Jonah up upon the dry land. 
Then in chapter 3, God says, hey, look, arise and go to Nineveh. And he basically says, hey, I'll get it done. And it's one of those things that it, it took quite a lot to get Jonah to bend and, and do the will of God. And so that's that's really what I want to kind of close with tonight is it take I'm a I'm a stubborn person. Ask anybody that knows me well enough. I'm a terribly stubborn person. I have to learn on my own. And sometimes I'm stubborn with God. God wants me to do something. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do it. And then after much deliberation and I'm going to say corrective measures, lots of times I'll follow that path and hopefully go down the way that God wants me to do. So look at your own life. You know, are you are you chasing things that, that God's trying to get you not to chase? Is he, you know, are, are you going down a path that possibly you may not need to be going down? I know sometimes I chase rabbits down certain holes that I don't need to chase, and hopefully God will give those corrective measures to me. But is it going to take a fish swallowing me up? I don't know. It just depends on how hardened your heart is. And I think that's something we all need to work on as individuals is our hearts have become hardened in this time of, you know, uncertainty with the virus this transitional time that we're even having in our church this uh time that we're you know quarantined the friends are quarantined you know we're worried about quarantine we're worried about individuals in our family we have to soften our hearts up and let god be the god that he's going to be and provide those 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 life-changing and course-altering corrections before he has to throw a fish down or something along those lines that is is enough of a shock and, and all, I guess, that would be, all right, God, I'm listening now. So as we close tonight, let's pray right quick. And then uh, y'all have a fantastic week. I appreciate y'all tuning in and listening. I hope that it wasn't too just rambling, but I hope that you got something out of our discussion tonight. So let's pray right quick. Father God, I come to you as a servant and as somebody that has a hardened heart. Lord, help me to soften the heart to where you come with your corrective measures and I respond to them easily and chase your will to the point where it needs to be finished. Lord, those times when I am completely blind and don't know where I'm going, provide those corrective measures for me. Guide me through the times that I do not know that I can get through. Lord, be with every everyone that's listening to this. Be with everyone that, that this might come into contact with. I hope that it was a meaningful discussion. I hope that it provides light onto their life to where they can see those corrective measures that you may be pushing out for them. Lord, bless the ones that are on the front lines right now dealing with the virus. Help them to have strength. And honestly, if they have to have a corrective measure of, of I can't go to work today. Yes, yes, you do. There's people that need you. Same thing. For everyone that's come into contact with the virus. Lord, help us through this turbulent time as we go through the storm that you may have provided for us as a corrective measure. Help us to see that. Help us to be good, good, what? People that would guide others to you. And Lord, thank you for this opportunity to sit down and discuss your word with our church family tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, thank y'all for tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, like I said, it was something that just came to me, and, I, and the paddle the paddle represents the corrective measures that God's going to put on us. So hopefully we can follow those corrective measures and, and be the people that we need to be, be the church we need to be for God's plan, God's kingdom. Thank you for tuning in once again. Have a great evening.